today, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about thankfulness and being thankful. And it's around this time of the year, instead of us being thankful, um, many times we'll feel other feelings like a feeling of lost or overwhelmed being overwhelmed or down, depressed, sad. I mean, all these things we wrestle with. And, and outside of having a severe disorder, thankfulness can be a game changer. In fact, today what we're going to do is for today and next Sunday, we're going to do a little mini-series where we talk about the power of thanks. There's an incredible amount of power behind it, being thankful. In fact, studies show that if we're thankful, thankful people have better attitudes. They have their, their health improves. They, they have a better health. They deal with anxiety better when they're thankful. Um, relationships are strengthened from thankfulness. I mean, it's, it's all around. It's something good for us to be thankful, yet we wrestle with it. We get sideways oftentimes. God's desire is for you to be thankful, to live a thankful life. In fact, that should be the essence of the Christian life, should be for us to be thankful. It should be our mindset for us. When you look at Romans chapter 1, uh, in that chapter, the apostle Paul writes and describes the human condition. He talks about us and, and, and the, just our humanity. And I want to read one verse to you that I, I think describes the society that we live in right now. It's verse 21, and this is what Scripture says. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. I'm not sure there's a better verse to describe the condition of our society. And quite possibly there's not a better verse to describe some of you right now. You don't honor God. You don't give him thanks. In fact, it's, it's changed the way that you think. Um, today what I want to do is I want to look at a very popular story in the Old Testament. It's found in Daniel chapter 6. Okay, that's where we're going to spend most of our time. Daniel chapter 6. You can, if you've got a Bible, you can go there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, we're going to play catch up for a moment. I'm going to talk about the context around Daniel and around uh, leading up to chapter 6 so you can gain a little bit of an understanding uh, of why we're going to talk about this. But in Daniel, this is what we find. It's, a, it's around 600, 605 B.C. What has happened is that uh, Nebuchadnezzar has come in and he has destroyed Jerusalem. He's burnt down their temples. He... He has humiliated the people because what he's done is he's taken their temples down. He's destroyed them. He's taken all their religious artifacts and things of that nature, and their religious symbols, and he's destroyed them as well, trying to eliminate any sign, any visual sign. He's trying to eliminate the worship of the one true God, Yahweh. And he's doing a pretty good job of this. He destroys not only their present, but he, he destroys their future or tries to. The way that he does this is he finds their, their, the greatest among them, their, their young uh, future leaders, and he takes them captive and he begins to indoctrinate them into the Babylonian way. What he's doing is he's trying to train them up and to teach them to be future leaders, government leaders for him. Well, when you pick up Daniel's story, he's around 12 to 15 years old. 
He is uprooted from his family. Nebuchadnezzar takes him uh, over a thousand miles away from his home. And he begins to uh, try to do the indoctrination. One of the things that he does is he wants them to be put on a special diet. Okay? He wants to, to give them the king's food. Food that has been offered to, to false gods and false idols. But one of the things that we learn about Daniel as you read his story is that he wasn't going to have this. In chapter 1, this is one of the things that we read about him. In verse 8, Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or the wine that he drank. I mean, he, he just like, I'm not going to have it. And if you read the story, it's a pretty cool story. He ends up, and God gives him favor with the leaders there, and, and he doesn't have, to, has, doesn't have to eat the king's food. But it's interesting to me, when you read that, he resolved that he would not defile himself. Uh, just, just a thought, just a thought. Uh, is there anything that you have made up your mind about when it comes to God? Because that's Daniel. He like... He made up his mind, one version said. He's, you're not going to change it about him. He's 13, 15 years old. When we get to chapter 6, decades have gone by. We believe now that he's somewhere in the mid-80s. And this is one thing that scripture says as decades have gone by in chapter 6, verse 3 Daniel became distinguished above all the other high officials and the satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. So you can see that Daniel has been favored. Daniel is growing in favor. The king likes him. And by chapter 6, he has distinguished himself, which is what you and I should be doing. As followers of Jesus, we should distinguish ourselves. We should stand out. We should make up our mind about things of God. This is what I want us to do today. I want us to change the way we think. See, the, the way to get wrong thoughts out is, is to get the right thoughts in. And so just for a moment, let's think about this idea of being thankful and the power of Thanks. When you look at Daniel's story in chapter 6, something has happened. There's been a leadership change in there. Nebuchadnezzar is no longer around. And uh, Darinus is there. And he's now the king. And he, he is known, historians say, that he is like uh, a brilliant um, administrator. He, he goes in and he takes over and he has this... this this way of administrating, this way of organizing the kingdom. And what he does is he takes a hundred, he forms 120 satraps, pulls these the leaders together. They're like guardians of the kingdom. And he puts three people or three administrators over them. And here's the thing. Daniel is one of them. Daniel was an administrator over these 120 satraps who are charged with guarding against rebellion. They are charged with collecting taxes. They, they, like they oversee the, the finances of the nation. That's what these satraps do. Well, when you read the story, there was something about Daniel that intimidated them. You, you can go all the way back to the first chapter and you can see with the officials and the satraps, they tried to find fault against Daniel. And they couldn't. They couldn't find anything against him. In fact, the only way that they could think of to get Daniel was to trap him when it came to his God. The only way that we can attack him is through his God. And that is exactly what they did. Um, somehow, they convinced the king to establish an ordinance that whoever would worship another god for 30 day, in 30 day, a 30-day 30 day period, other than him, they would be thrown into the lion's den. 
somehow they convinced this king to do that. Well, when he did, word made its way to Daniel. And we, we see this in, in verse 10. We see what happens when Daniel knew. I'll read this to you. When Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went, he, he went to his house where he had windows in his upper chamber open towards Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had done previously. Does that seem strange to you? The king has just issued a command. No one is to worship another god for 30 days. Daniel hears the document has been signed, knows that if he worships God, he risks being thrown into a lion's den, and he goes to his house, he goes to the upper room, the very place where he had spent decades praying to God three times a day, and he just goes about his business of thanking God and giving thanks to him and praying. When you look at Daniel's prayer, you can summarize it up by the fact that he just he gave thanks. He was very thankful. And what, what I want to do today is I want to show you the power in what Daniel had done. Something that he had always done for decades. There's, there's a power there. And if we could just figure out that power, it could be life-changing for us. In fact, this, if you're taking notes, what I want to do is, is answer this question. What, what can thankfulness do in your life? What can it do? I, I'm going to give you three things. Three things. We see them in, in Daniel's story. Thankfulness. The first one can do is this. Thankfulness can provide protection. That's what thankfulness does. It provides protection. You would think that Daniel, knowing that the king had signed this command, that he wouldn't be as public as he was. I'm just thinking, if, I, if it were me and I knew this was out there, I'm not supposed to worship any other gods, I'm not supposed to pray to any other gods, then I think what I'm going to do is I, I may go back to my house. Instead of leaving my windows open so that everyone can see me, I may close them. I may pray in the privacy of my home. Maybe, maybe I just pray in my mind. Like I'm, I'm talking to God. I'm praying. Nobody knows. But not Daniel. Not Daniel. Daniel, he goes and he gets on his hands. Like he, just, he just does something that he had repeatedly done. Thankfulness, it provides protection. Watch this. Uh, the, the king found out. The satraps told on him. And a king, he can't go back on his commands. So in verse 16, we see what happens. Then the king commanded, and Daniel was brought and cast into the lion's den. The king declared to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve, continuously deliver you. The king knew there was nothing he could do. He liked Daniel. Remember, he was wanting to make Daniel put him over the kingdom. And now he's fallen into his trap. Daniel has done the very thing that he wasn't supposed to do. He's had to throw him into the lion's den. And I don't, I don't want you to, don't think of the lion's den like the Sunday school you know, lessons when you were growing up as a kid, when you'd see the pictures of Daniel, you know, maybe he's laid, laying back on a, on a lion that's like, like, no, he's, this would have been a terrifying experience. The, these lions would have been, uh, you know, they would have been, uh, they wouldn't have fed them, they would have had them in such a way to where anytime you would throw someone in there, they would immediately rip them to shreds. This would have been terrifying for Daniel. He's thrown into the lion's den. The king is, you know, he's upset about this. And we get down a few verses. You get down to verse 19, and we see what happens the next morning. At break of day, the king arose and went in haste to the den of lions. 
As he came near to the den where Daniel was, he cried out in a tone of anguish. You can see that, that he's hurting over this. He's thinking, Daniel has been ripped to shreds. The king declared to Daniel, Oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continuously been able to deliver you from the lions? Verse 21 says, Then Daniel said to the king, O oh, king, Live forever. Like Daniel, he's just showing him honor. My God sent his angel and shut the, the lion's mouth, and they have not harmed me. Do you see the protection there? I would imagine things would, might have been a little bit different if Daniel had complained. If Daniel had said to God, God, why are you throwing me in this lion's den? For decades I have been faithful to you. I've prayed to you for, for, you know, three times a day I've given you thanks and I've prayed and everybody knows it and this is the thanks I get? You're going to throw me in a lion's Things might have been just a little bit different had he complained, had he been negative. When we get thrown into the lion's den, thankfulness provides protection. I believe it's why the Apostle Paul, when he was writing to the church in Philippi, he said these words to him in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. I love the way the New Living Translation puts this. Tell God what you need. And what are the next two words? And thank him. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Not for the good things. But for all the things, whether they're good or bad, thank him for what he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I love that word guard. That, that word guard in, in, the, in the Greek is a military term. It means to guard. It means to protect by military force. It's like God's peace stands on duty to protect you. When you go to God with your needs and you thank him for all that he has done. But when we don't, when we don't live with, with thankfulness, what happens is we become critical and, and unappreciative and, and unthankful. And when, we, when that happens, it's like we become unguarded. There's no protection in our lives. Doubt will rise up and you'll begin to doubt God's character. You'll begin to doubt his love for you. You'll begin to doubt his power in your life. You, you'll become selfish. You, you'll start to think things like, well, I don't deserve any of this. I deserve better than this. God, you can do something different. Whenever we, we have that attitude, it's, it's like things Grow in us. You know, we have a, a love for the world that we shouldn't have. We pursue worldly pleasures and possessions. And we get our eyes on relationships that we shouldn't have our eyes on. See what happens? When we become unthankful. We, we become toxic. Like we, we show bitterness and negativity. Our love gets corroded our egos grow thankfulness will provide protection for you but not only will it provide protection but it will produce faithfulness that's number two it will produce faithfulness it produces faithfulness you you can see it in in Daniel's life how it produced faithfulness remember this wasn't just a, a one-time thing. This was decades of him living like this. In chapter 6, verse 22, we, we see his faithfulness. Uh, the Bible says this, uh, My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth, and they have not harmed me because I was found blameless before him. He was found blameless. And also before you, O king, I have done no harm. Well, what, is, what is the scripture saying? Daniel was saying, I, I, I've been faithful. I was found faithful. And that's what thankfulness will do. It will produce faithfulness in our lives. 
You, you, we know this when you look back and you see where the, the officials and the satraps were looking to trap Daniel. They would say things like this. We, we can't find fault. We want to, but we can't find fault with him because he was faithful. That was them. You know, the real miracle of this story might not be the fact that the lions didn't rip him apart. The real miracle of this story might be the fact that his enemies couldn't find anything against him. Why is that? It's because of a life of faithfulness. Oftentimes, it's hard to see God's faithfulness in the lion's den because we haven't been faithful outside of the lion's den. You're not going to see God's blessing on your job when you've completely separated him from your job. You're not going to see God use you in a powerful way at your, at your school or on campus or, or you know, at your place of, of, of business when no one knows that you live for God. You're never going to see God come through for you financially when you've never trusted him with your finances. You're never going to see God heal your marriage when, when, you never, when you're not all about serving your spouse. Like It just doesn't happen that way. Thankfulness, it produces faithfulness in our life. And, and for, for him, it, it wasn't, Daniel, it wasn't something that just happened in the lion's den. It was something that happened decades ago. It was, it was a life of consistency with him. And that's what it will do for us. When we were thankful, it will produce faithfulness. And perhaps the, most, the one that's my favorite is thankfulness powers trust. It powers it. You look at Daniel. On down um, in verse 23, then the king was... This was after he knew he was alive. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no kind of harm was found on him because, I love those next few words, he had trusted in his God. How could he do that? How could he trust in a God that allowed him to be thrown into a lion's den. It's because of his thankfulness. His thankfulness powered the trust. See, thanking God is totally linked to trusting him. When, when you thank God when things are bad, you will trust him to make things good. It just, it just happens that way. When, when you're not thankful, you're not, th you're not trustful. Like, we just stop believing. We stop believing in God, in His power. We stop believing in His truth. We stop believing in His strength. We start looking at God, and the more we look at God, the smaller He gets and the bigger our problems get. And when we have a little God and a, and a, and a big problems, like, everything becomes a big deal for us. And we, we just walk in defeat. But thankfulness... It's what sets us apart. It's what distinguishes us from anybody else. That's the way that we should walk as followers of Christ. You're not going to have faith in a God that you're not thankful for. And you're never going to trust a God that you don't have faith in. That's the power of thanks. It's not that it's going to keep you out of the lion's den. But it's, it's going to see you through. Why is thankfulness so important? It provides protection for us. It, it produces something in us. Like a faithfulness. Don't you, don't you think our, our world needs some faithful people? 
that are not just wavering and swaying any old way. And it gives power to trust. You may say, well, you know, this, why is this so important? See, when you're not thankful, you'll become forgetful. Forgetfulness is an enemy to our faith. Because when you forget what God did, you'll stop believing what God can do. And for some of you, maybe you're here or you're watching on the other side of a screen and that's where you are. You're looking at your situation. You you feel like you're surrounded by lions. You're surrounded by things that can, can rip you apart and destroy your life. And you've forgotten God's faithfulness. Let me tell you something. Thankfulness powers it. So where are you today? Where are you? Are you thankful? Are you more critical, negative? I get it. Sometimes it's hard to be thankful in every circumstance. I've lived a long time. I can tell you this. In my life, without failure, I can look back and I can see in every circumstance there was something to be thankful for. And it can be the same way for you. Will you bow your heads? Close your eyes. Have you lost your thankfulness? Or are you having a hard time being thankful? Why don't you recommit today? Christians, you should be the most thankful people on the planet. Because you realize that sin separated you from a holy God. You realize that your sin, if not dealt with, if not forgiven, would forever keep you away from God. We should be the most thankful people in the world because we know that we have a God who loves us, a God who stepped out of heaven and lived the life that we should have lived and died the death that we should have died. He did that for us. We should be the most thankful people. Why don't you recommit? God, Make me thankful. God, help me to see the good. Even when I'm in the lion's den. There's some of you here, and before you will ever experience the power of things, you have to have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So you'll never experience a thankful life apart from Jesus because you don't know it yet I want to encourage you today why don't you say yes to Jesus Christ why don't you say yes maybe you're here and you're like well what does that mean I I want this Jesus guy I want to be thankful let me tell you about Jesus Jesus was the son of God Jesus stepped out of heaven and as I said a moment ago he lived this sinless perfect life the life that you and I should have lived and he died a death that you and I should have died he went to the cross he bore our sin he bore our shame God put that on him and when he died he didn't stay dead he rose again three days later so that he could put his life right inside of you yes you No matter what you've done, God loves you that much to give you a gift of salvation through His Son, Jesus. Have you received Him today? If you haven't, that is where the power of thanks starts, right there, with a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, I want to give you an opportunity right now to say yes to Him. You you might say, well, Pastor, how do I do that? How do I do that? The Bible says this, that if you would believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, 
And that if you would confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, meaning you, you would say, um, I'm turning my life around. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm turning from my life of sin to a life surrendered to Jesus. You're Lord of my life, Jesus. If you would do that, you will be saved. And maybe you're here today and that's not been something that you've done, but you want to say yes to Jesus. Say yes now. Say yes now. Just pray this prayer with me with your heads bowed, your eyes are closed, but your heart is open to God. Say yes to Jesus. Just say, Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe you gave your life for me. And Jesus, I want to receive that gift of salvation today. Tell him, Jesus, I'm all yours. Jesus, I'm turning from my life of sin to a life surrendered to you right now. I'm giving you my life. Listen, if that was your prayer, wherever you are, whether you're in this room or you're on the other side of a screen, Jesus Christ just stepped out of heaven and right into your heart, right then. And if that was your prayer, you got to tell somebody. And I, I'm going to ask you just to start with me in just a few moments. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count to three. And if that was your prayer, if you said yes to Jesus, I want you to just raise your hand. Like by you lifting your hand, this is what you're saying. You're saying, Pastor, I said yes to him. I, I'm turned from my life of sin. I'm turning to a life surrendered to him. If that was your prayer, wherever you are, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to raise it now. One, two, three. Just raise it up. Let's pray, yes. Lord. Thank you so much for your faithfulness, for the way that you are moving in our lives. And Lord, I thank you that your faithfulness does not depend on what we bring or what... Um, uh, that your faithfulness is not dependent on us, Lord. Thank you for this service. And I pray that as we all go out into our weeks that you help us to stay grounded in gratitude. Lord, I pray for every soul that is watching online. I pray that if there is anybody that has not yet said yes to you, Lord, that you open up their hearts, Jesus. Lord, I speak life into everybody watching online. And I pray that as they go out into the world this week, that they are disciples and that they spread your good news, your truth, Lord. Thank you for the message that you brought through Pastor Lance today for an incredible service. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you guys so much for joining us for service today as we kicked off a new sermon series, The Power of Thanks. We hope you guys have a great week and we'll see you guys next week.